Welcome to The Advocates, I'm Aaron Dean. Texas Senator Ted Cruz wants to keep federal employees from using preferred pronouns or names. The senator's legal name is Rafael Edward Cruz. Ted is his preferred name. Cruz introduced the Safeguarding Honest Speech Act it would block federal employees from enforcing policies that require federal employees to use preferred pronouns or names other than an individual's legal name. Cruz claims that forcing pronoun usage violates the First Amendment. Critics, include GLAD CEO Sarah Kate Ellis, are calling the bill dangerous, demeaning, and hypocritical. Seattle public school students are responding to book ban efforts from far-right extremist group Moms for Liberty, sending them a clear message on social media. Students created cards with messages like LGBTQ plus rights are human rights and gay is slay, stop being a rat. Moms for Liberty posted pictures of the cards online, accusing school systems of, quote, weaponizing children. The school system responded, saying that the cards were an independent activity and not part of the curriculum. Groups like PEN America report that Moms for Liberty has been behind a majority of book bans across the country. Attorney Mary Bonato helped push Massachusetts to become the first state to legalize marriage equality. She did it again in front of the Supreme Court in the landmark Obergefell v. Hodges case that led to marriage equality nationwide in 2015. She says that we need to stick together as we see a rise in anti-LGBTQ plus bills. I would like to think that that wrapped up. I don't see it. I mean, I feel like in my 30 plus years now at the 1A GLAD, what I've learned is that no victory is ever final, mm. um, nor is any loss. And I hate losses. And at the same time, I feel like there is always some sort of path forward and a different way to come at issues, or maybe you've got to have a slight delay and do some other things first. But I want to say the only way to actually get to those victories is for people to stay involved, to stay positive. And ideally, when you run into people who don't agree with you, um, you know, that you hear what they have to say and respond in a way that invites more conversation and not less. There are, there are, big forces out there that are really trying to squash us mm -hmm. okay but a lot of people just have questions and some of the questions can be annoying but those are the people we need to engage uh, because we really do have some existential threats out there and people are very very active but i continue to believe that when we hang together and we stick with just, justice and with love that we will win Cataluna Enriquez was the first and only trans woman to compete for Miss USA. She represented Nevada in 2021. Now she's being crowned Miss International Queen USA 2024. It's a new pageant coming to the US and the first for trans women. Enriquez shares what some of her priorities are. Check it out. Cataluna, welcome to the show. How are you? We have a queen in our midst, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. And I love the Christmas tree. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so, and I'm passing yours in the background too. Okay. It's, very cool. it's cute. It's tiny, but it's giving. It's it's giving. It's all it's all that matters. It's giving. You know, you are inspiring so many people with your journey. How did you get started with pageants? Tell us how did this all come to be? You know, it's funny because when I was from a very long time, I viewed pageantry as objectifying women and very um, not what it is now. I think pageantry has evolved so much into uh, act, an activist, using your voice and being purposeful. And that's something that I wanted to be a part of. And uh, I started in the, the trans pageant world and then eventually went to the Miss USA as the first trans woman. And now I'm going back to the Miss International Queen USA pageant. And, you know, you are the first and only trans woman to compete for Miss USA when you did so as Miss Nevada in 2021. What are some of the things that, or people, that inspired you to just keep going on your journey? What inspired you? Really, it's just the idea of not being limited to what society expects you to be. I think we're so conditioned into... Uh, being categorized and put in a box. We tell women that, you know, they're only valuable at a certain age. And then we put uh, this set of unhealthy standards for men. And me going back into the pageant world is really just dismantling that idea and 
uh, chasing my dreams. And hopefully by doing so, I inspire many more people to just keep on going and keep chasing your dreams. And the annual Miss International Queen is the biggest pageant for transgender women. And you have been named the first Miss International Queen for the United States. Congratulations. Thank you know, you. tell our audience a little bit about this new pageant and that, that will be coming to Vegas. Yeah, it's so exciting because I've I've done so much work here in, in Las Vegas. And for what I know, Las Vegas or the state of Nevada is one of the great states for uh, LGBTQ plus community. And I'm so excited that it's finally going here. Uh, and we're going to have a competition next year. It's going to be huge. It's going to be one of a kind. And I just want to invite every trans person in America to come and watch and be a part of the new organization. And, you know, what does it mean for trans visibility to have a landmark pageant for trans women to be brought here to the U.S.? Uh, it means so much, especially because history, we've just been erased so many times and it's about time that we have our, our own platform, but also share that platform in many, uh, to many organizations and to many communities. It is time that we are visible and we celebrate ourselves and what our blessings and what makes us beautiful. You know, and your reign as Miss International Queen USA comes during a time where there are so many, you know, anti-trans attacks and laws that are on the rise. You know, how will you use your platform to be, you know, the queer voice and to help, you know, tell stories of queer people and trans people who have been silenced here in, you know, in our communities for so long? Uh, great question. Um... I use my platform in media to share my experiences. I've also experienced so many trauma. Mm -hmm. And as a survivor of physical and mental abuse, uh, or sorry, physical and sexual abuse, I, I've just been through so many things. And those are things that we don't often talk about. And I just, uh, I think with mental health, it comes with understanding. And in my platform, I, I try to use understanding to create empathy and to connect with people. And that's what I'm going to do throughout my entire reign. And just show of more my experience and then also share experiences of other people. I think just the more that we communicate and share those, the more that we get to learn from each other and uh, hopefully create a beautiful, create a, a better future for all. Yeah. You know, and there's so much good that comes out of Miss International Queen USA. You know, the nonprofit B, the transformational change is involved as well. Tell us about that. Yeah. So in the B Transformational Change organization, we are working on not just having a pageant, but also having a system of support where we are educating other people, connecting them through either uh, education or support through, uh, let's say, hormones or to mental health or really just anything that we can offer. And, you know, if there is a young queer person out there who feels like they've been put, you know, into the margins of what, what advice do you have for them? You know, especially coming from your experience, what do you say to that young person out there who's watching? Is like, you know what? She did it. So can I. <laughs> right. It's always be yourself. I think every single one of us is blessed and born with a purpose. I think finding that and really running with it and really embracing yourself and let the show world what that beauty is and then really just shock the world with what you can do with it. Yeah. And is there anything else you want to add or share with our audience? Uh, I'm not sure when the date is released or if I'm, I'm sure if I'm allowed to share that yet, but I'm just hoping everyone would tune in and, and support us with the new organization of the Miss International Queen USA and the Be Transferred Emotional Change organization. Yes. Oh, and of course, you know, outside of the pageant, anything else that you're working on that you want to share with our audience? Any projects, you know, that you can tell us about? Yeah, um, I am going, I'm still working on my media stuff. So, and, I, and, I, and with this reign specifically, I want to be more uh, vulnerable and a lot more personal with my audience. So just tune into my media platforms and the Miss International Queen USA as well. Wonderful. Well, we are so grateful to have you here to join us today. Thank you so much for the work that you do. And I can't wait to see what else comes from this reign. And then of course, you know, hereafter as well. <laughs> Thank you so much, Erin. Thanks for watching The Advocates. Download the app in the Apple or Google Play Store to stream us live, and you can even subscribe to our YouTube channel. For The Advocate Channel, I'm Aaron Dean.